In this video, let's talk about uh, the, the, the frequency and the, the reasons for um, a disc re-herniation. So this is the scenario where a patient's had a disc, her a disc herniation, we go in and do surgery for it, and then after surgery at some point, the disc herniates again. Uh, in the lumbar spine, disc herniations are very common. Most of the time they don't require surgery, but sometimes uh, they do, and the surgical outcomes generally are very good. We do discectomy, microlumbar discectomy, uh, fairly frequently, and the goal is to get in and to remove the herniated fragment uh, and any other material that's pinching the nerve. And again, the outcomes are very good. About 10% of the time, the disc will herniate again and, uh, and, and may need another surgery. Why does it herniate again? D didn't you do a good job in the first place? Well, when we do a discectomy, we're removing the fragment that's herniated, but we don't have an ability to fully repair the disc. A disc that's herniated has, has been injured in some way, and we don't surgically have an ability to you know, stitch the disc back together to make it structurally perfectly sound again. So the disc can herniate again. When does a disc herniation or re-herniation typically happen? It usually happens within the first few weeks to months after surgery. Now, a disc could herniate again later, but most of the time I have seen the re-herniations occur within the first few weeks to, a first, uh, to the first maybe few months after. What are the options if a disc were to herniate again? Well, it's frustrating to have undergone a surgery that you think is gonna fix the problem and then have to face another problem. What are your options? Well, you could do another discectomy. And I typically would recommend this if we thought that the reherniation was relatively easy to get to. If it's very early after surgery, there's not a lot of scar tissue, that's a good option. Sometimes we may elect to do a more definitive treatment, which would be either a lumbar fusion or a disc replacement. Reasons to consider a more definitive treatment would be maybe the disc has herniated multiple times. There could be a lot of scar tissue for which we have to remove more bone to work around the scar tissue so we're not risking injuring the nerve. Uh, what can I do to prevent the disc from reherniating? We recommend that patients uh, be mindful of their movement and incrementally and gradually increase activity. We know the discs get fluid and nutrition and nutrient exchange from activity, so it's important to be active. I think that sometimes discs just re-herniate, and if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And it's not necessarily something that you can prevent and in like manner that you should be afraid of causing, because we don't want patients to be afraid of, of hurting something so, such that they're inactive or don't move because that can have problems in and of itself and the disc could still re-herniate. Uh, we recommend discectomy when we think it's the best option for patients knowing that about 10% of the time the disc re-herniates but also knowing that we don't want to do fusions on every single patient with the disc herniation and it's much better to do a more conservative discectomy approach in many cases and if the disc re-herniates we have lots of options to manage and treat the re-herniation.